The thought of changing our hydraulic hose can fill you with dread, especially on a bike like this one where that hose is rooted internally through the frame. But with the correct tools and a little bit of know-how, it's actually such a simple job to do. In this video, I'm going to show you the step-by-step -step process of replacing the hydraulic hose on this bike. Now I'm going to be working on the Shimano road system, but the fundamental process is very similar across all brake types. So in order to do this job, you're going to need some tools. So let's go through those now. A hydraulic hose cutting tool, a barb insertion tool. You can either get the cheap and cheerful one like that that clamps hold of the hose for you, or a more advanced one like this one that drives the barb in for you. Nice bit of kit, that one. Seven, eight millimeter spanners, an internal routing kit an essential bit of kit if you've got an internally rooted bike, can't stress that enough. A sharp knife, a bleed block, a small flat headed screwdriver, a pair of long nose pliers, some insulating tape, some general assembly grease, a clean cloth and some brake cleaning fluid. Now obviously to do this job you're going to need some parts. You will need a length of brake hose obviously, but you're also going to need two olives and two hose barbs. Now, don't worry, I know all of that stuff that I've gone on about there is a lot to remember. I've listed it all in the description below, along with some affiliate links as to where you can buy it. Now, that list does include some specialist tools that you have to have, but you can save yourself a lot of time and hassle here and get yourself the Epic Bleed Solutions Hose Shortening Kit. Bear with me, I'll explain why. Because this kit includes the specialist hose cutter tool, that little basic clamp that clamps the hose for you for when you put the barbs in, and on that point it comes with both of the barbs and both of the olives that you need. And they even include a couple of spanners to help you undo the hose. Link below. Shimano hose comes in two sizes, BH59 and BH90. We are working on modern Shimano road today, so we will be using BH90. If you're unsure which version you need, our friends at Epic Bleed Solutions have a handy little chart on their website, link below, and that shows you what size you need for your specific group set. You can buy non-Shimano cheap hose online, don't bother, because it expands under pressure and gives you spongy brakes. Buy the genuine stuff. Now you can get this from your local bike shop and they usually charge roughly 10 pounds a meter for it, or you can buy it online in various lengths, link in the description below. This is gonna be a two part job. We're gonna be replacing the hose, but then the system's gonna need bleeding as well. In this video, I'm covering off just the hose replacement, but don't panic, both at the end and below is a link to the video that shows you the next stage of how to bleed the system. So I've got everything covered off, don't panic. Right, now let's crack on, get this hose replaced, and let's do the trickier one of the two, the back brake. So this is the bike I'm working on, running Shimano Altegra 8000, first job on my list. Take those wheels off, because all they're gonna do is get in the way. Let's also take the pads out, because you can guarantee it, when we disconnect that hose, hydraulic fluid will flick out and contaminate the pads. Workshop top tip for you, get yourself one of these little magnetic parts trays. And you can put things like those little clips in there, stick it on there, and you won't lose anything. Good practice whenever you take your pads out, always put a bleed block in their place. Next job is to wind the bar tape off and peel the hood back. And if we are super careful, we should be able to reuse this bar tape. Using our eight millimeter spanner, let's disconnect that hose from the lever. This hose is never gonna pass through the frame with that olive on the end. Thing is, that flare nut has crushed that olive on. It is never gonna come off that pipe. You're wasting your time trying to get it off. You'll never get it off. Best thing to do, grab your hose cutting tool, put it on there, and chop it off. That flare nut, pop it back in the lever for now for safekeeping. We don't want to lose it. There you go. So this frame's got one of these little cable routing points here. You're much better off unscrewing that and sliding it along the pipe rather than trying to fight the pipe down it because it's just going to make your life really, really hard. So a little hex key to undo that. This is a wonderful little tool that I've been meaning to show you. This is the Press to Cycle three-way tool. This is a wonderful little bit of kit. Basically, you get your three most used hex bits and you fit them on there and it's got these wonderful little magnets on it. So if you do need to change them, you can just pull the magnet down and then just lift them out and then drop it in there. Like that. It's a lovely little bit of kit, that. And I know the one that I want is the two mil, which is one of the ones I use all the time. So it's that one there. And then just pop that in there and undo it. 
That's all the work done at the lever end. Let's start on the caliper. Using your eight millimeter spanner, let's disconnect that hose from the caliper. One thing you can't avoid when you're doing this job, you're gonna see a little bit of hydraulic fluid get spilt, ends up on your frame and on your calipers and stuff like that. Just get an old rag and wipe it up as you go. A must have tool if you've got a frame like this where it's internally rooted is one of these, the internal routing kit. If you look after your own bike and it's internally rooted like this, I cannot stress it enough. You would be crazy not to own a tool like this. Let me show you how you use it. The internal routing kit comes with various types of wires like this with various types of connections. This particular one is a threaded connection and you get one end of the wire and you screw it to the old hose like so. Right, so it's attached very firmly to the hose at this end. Let's feed it through. Into the frame it goes. Carefully feed it through. And there you go. There it is at that end. Simple as that. So all we need to do now is get our new hose, attach it to this end, and then draw it back through. Right, so that's the tool attached. Got the other end. Let's feed it through. There you go. <coughs> as simple as that. Quick top tip, the routing tool being threaded into the hose will have damaged that end of the hose. So grab your cutting tool and just snip about a centimetre off so then your barb has got something clean to connect to rather than a flared end. Now we go through the process of connecting everything back up and take my word for it, you want to start at the caliper end. The, the run between the caliper and the frame is very, very short, which makes it extremely hard to work with. So because it's not plumbed in, you've got a bit of movement on the hose. So yes, trust me, do this end first. Okay, so the first thing we do is we put on our flare nut. Steel flare nut going to an aluminium caliper. Yes, you've guessed it, prevent galvanic corrosion. Put a tiny amount of grease on the thread, just a tiny amount. Slot your flare nut on first. Then goes your olive. Olive on next. Last, the barb into the hose. Start it by hand, then grab your barb tool and drive the barb into the hose. Simple as that. If you're doing this on a regular basis, get yourself one of those tools, it's really good. Okay. Now because, as I was saying earlier, because it's not connected at the other end, we've got a bit of movement and things are moving around a bit. Makes life a little bit easier. Apply a small amount of grease, just a tiny amount of grease to the olive. Just a tiny amount to aid installation. And reconnect the hose. and pinch it up with your eight mil spanner. Right, so that's my caliper end done. I'm just uh, sorting out my frame routing, putting that back in. All right, so so far this very complicated job is turning out to be a doddle, isn't it? It's taking us a few minutes. Right, so all we need to do now is connect the other end of the hose into the lever. Two things to remember here. First of all, you need to leave a little bit of slack down here so that your handlebars can turn. You don't want it so tight that the handlebars don't turn. And also, you need to leave a little bit more than it looks. Don't cut the hose off where the lever starts because the hose goes quite a way into the lever, so allow a bit more. So for me, I think my cut is about, you know, feeding that there, holding it up against the handlebars, enough movement. I think my cut is about there. Okay, same process as the caliper end. Let's put a few things on. First of all, our flare nut. Now, a little tip for you. If you've got on your hose, like I've got on this bike, for example, things like little frame protectors on the hose, put those on before you do all of this because once you do the flare nut up, it will crush the olive and you'll never get the flare nut off. And so therefore you won't be able to get things like 
foam protectors over the hose. So I've done mine already there. So flare nut, put that on. Then put our olive on. And then the barb. And as same as the rear, push it on by hand first. Then grab your barb tool and drive the barb in, like so. Maybe I should oil this. Now all we need to do is connect it to the lever. Don't forget, as on the rear, a small amount of assembly grease on both the olive, just a smear, and the thread of the flare nuts to aid installation and prevent any corrosion. Right, so that's my hose all connected up and I've put a bit of insulating tape around there just to hold the hose in place. Now, let's see if I can rescue this bar tape. There you go. Managed to save the bar tape like it had never happened. But you are only half done. You now need to bleed the system. And to learn how to do that, you need to watch that video next. Or alternatively, if you know what you're doing, then why not just watch that video instead, where we look at some rather nice, rather lightweight, all carbon road wheels. Thanks for watching.